Hello everybody and welcome to a special edition of Agile IT Tech Talks. Um, today we're going to walk through the validation process to get into Microsoft's GCC high environment. This is a common stumbling block for our prospects and our clients and we've helped dozens of organizations through this process either to help them navigate the documentation to provide, um, to help reapply after they've been validated at the wrong, at the wrong level, um, or just got confused with Microsoft's own documentation and process. Um, you can read the full write-up of this video at agileit.co slash gcchv. Uh, that's down there below. Um, so let's get started. So while there is some complication along the way, it's helpful to think of this as a simple three-step process. First, there's requesting validation. Then you'll need to provide proof of eligibility. And finally, you'll need to submit for licensing. Now, while licensing is almost out of the scope of this talk, um, failure to do these first two correctly and getting the wrong validation will really throw a wrench into the gears of the licensing process, particularly after you've paid for everything, everything's submitted, and then you find out that you're a Category 2 instead of a Category 3 entity, and we have to start this whole process over. So by following these three simple steps, we're able to go through it pretty easily. So let's walk through validation. In order to simplify things, we've created a link shortener down here um, to the current validation form, so you can get there by going to agileit.co slash msgcch, and that's for Microsoft GCC High. Um, one thing to call out is that Microsoft has recently changed the forms used to apply for GCC High, and unless you know what to look for, you'll wind up filling out the wrong form and having to start over. Sometimes the communication can be really confusing and we did have one person trying to get into GCC High who just did the same form over and over and over again until we tried to help. So let me show you what you want to watch out for and then we'll go through the proper process. So here we've got the Microsoft 365 Government How to Buy page. Um, this is on the Microsoft documentation and you scroll down and it talks about the different offerings, it talks about the different licensing vehicles, um, a commercial enti what entities are allowed into GCC High, um, some of the feature parity, how to buy it, so we are an AOSG partner, and look at that, we're right down here. Now, how do I buy Microsoft 365 government? Follow these steps, complete and submit the form. This used to be the form you would use to fill out for GCC High. This is now used for the GCC trial, which is not open for civilian entities. You have to be a US government agency or entity or tribal government, local government, um, in order to get that trial. Um, instead, what we'll do, and this is that link shortener I used earlier, they are using the Azure General Validation Form. This is where you need to go and of course the reason why I did the shortened version is this is a long hard to uh, translate URL so again you can use that agileit.co slash msgcch um, URL to get here um, so I want to go through this form real quick um, thankfully I've got an auto form fill here that does most of it easily I'm gonna take note to fix my phone number in here some of it is not standard so the thing I really want to call out and this has confused a number of people is this section here my organization is a US federal state local or tribal government entity a solution provider serving US federal state local or tribal government entities everybody wants to click this um, I'm a intelligence contractor for the DOD I'm a solution provider but no you, solution providers in this case specifically speak to Microsoft solution providers, uh, so Microsoft partners. Here, you're going to want to click Customers Handling Government Controlled Data. Organization name, organization website, I might as well fix it. Just in the interest of being complete. Now, the business address. We have helped clients who are multinational but are. Um, DOD contractors and where they run into problems is that they will provide their global headquarters which may be in London or Germany you will get kicked back immediately um, so you have to have a US address um, so a nexus if you will uh, within the United States for this form um, 
So, is your entity a United States person? Um, I have also heard of people not doing this correctly. Um, a U.S. person means a person who is, also means any corporation, business association, partnership, society, trust, or any other entity that is incorporated to do business in the United States. Um, it does not include any foreign person. So click yes on this. Are you a private entity holding any of the following types of data subject to government regulation? This is going to be um, specific to you. Um, so you may be a nuclear monitoring group, set DOE. Um, if you are uh, working within aerospace, probably got ITAR. Um, if ITAR, um, please provide a copy of any available supporting evidence to prove the entity is registered with the DOD trade control. Um, so this is gonna be part of the document phase I was talking about earlier. Um, this is your final opt-in, and I'm not gonna do it because I actually like the people um, over there and I'm not trying to spam them. Um, but let's look, what it, let's look at what it looks like after you submit. So depending on the GCC validation team's workload, in a few hours or days after submitting the validation form, you'll get a request for further information and documentation. One thing to note is to not submit multiple copies of that form, um, as this will slow the response time, um, and it will make them not like you, um, because then they have to consolidate all of those entries. Um, so if you do need to follow up on your submission after a week or so, give them some time. Um, you can email them at usgcce at, Microsoft at microsoft.com, and that's the U.S. Um, government cloud uh, eligibility team. So you'll get an email, and of course, you know, govern got it all redacted here. Um, so in this email, there may be um, a request for clarification of information submitted on the form. So you saw I messed up my phone number, so they would ask about that. Um, but the most important part in this is the documentation requests. There are two types of validation you can provide. The first is a signed contract that specifically calls out the data type of information being handled. Um, and that contract must also have the name of the entity that owns the data clearly stated. Um, and they will also attach a sponsor letter that I'll show you guys here in a minute. So I do know one customer who is moving forward on one of his first DOD projects as a subcontractor, but didn't have a signed contract calling out um, NIST 800-171 yet. Um, they were able to submit a signed NDA that mentioned the requirements and which was printed on a very well-known aerospace company's letterhead. Um, I'm convinced it was the aerospace company's letterhead that did it. Um, they were approved, but I wouldn't recommend going that route. Um, rather, a proper contract that calls out ITAR, DFARS, CJS, NIST 800-171, or mentions CUI um, is your best bet. Now, once CMMC language starts getting added to DOD contracts, that will be accepted as well. So the second type of documentation is this sponsorship letter. The letter must be on the letterhead of an existing Category 3 validated organization and must also call out the type of information being handled. Microsoft provides this template um, attached to the document request email to help make sure you get all of the proper information. Um, now, now note that while this letter does say agency, it can be provided by any Microsoft validated Category 3 entity, um, including contractors, but they must already be recognized as Category 3 or it won't work. There are Microsoft customers who are on-prem and have not been validated as a Category 3 entity, and they manage everything on their own responsibility um, where that won't work. So make sure you ask. Are you category three? The person you're talking to may not know. Ask them if they use GCC High. Um, but this really, I would say, is the secondary approach. Really, the contract is the quickest and easiest way to get through that I know of. So after all that, you're all set? Um, well, <clears throat> hopefully. I've seen some documentation get kicked back for not being clear enough. Um, so for established defense contractors, there's usually plenty of evidence you can provide. Um, and sometimes it does become a little back and forth. And you can always work with your agency liaison or your primary contact at your prime contractor to help with that documentation. Um, so what does it look like? 
here we are. This is the golden letter. Um, and th the reason I wanted to call this out is we have had a number of people come to us and we ask, hey, have you done this? Um, and they say, yeah, I got a go Azure government um, trial a year ago. And no, that won't work. What you need is this. S as a category three entity, if you are a category two entity, you are able to move into Azure government. You're able to move into GCC. You cannot move into GCC high. Missing that step and thinking that you're a category three entity when you are in fact a category two entity means that once you submit for licensing, you're going to have to go through the process again. Now, since getting a tenant set up and that initial licensing process can take up to 30 days, that's going to put an extra week or two in your migration project, in your deployment project. So you really want to make sure that <clears throat> you have the right validation. Um, and when you're ready with this, you can go ahead and forward that to us at Agile IT or give us a call. We're more than happy to help you with all the licensing and figure out your pricing, as well as set up your baselines for government compliance. Um, so. Thank you very much for joining us and checking this out. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, you can find out more at agileit.com or if you'd like to read the blog, which also has a copy of that sample letter, um, please visit us at agileit.co slash gcchv. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to ask questions there in the comments section below or in the comments section of our blog. Um, thanks a lot. Have a great day and see you soon.